start the uh, program now. Um, we have uh, three uh, distinguished guests who are just going to talk uh, briefly about um, contemporary Tibetan art, about uh, this event, Art for Tibet, and um, also about the organization that this event uh, benefits students for a free Tibet. This is um, the second annual Art for Tibet, um, and it's grown a lot already in one year, and uh, we're very grateful to the Union Gallery and to John Pete in particular for um, providing this, this um, wonderful space for us to uh, hold our exhibition. First we have um, Dr. Robbie Barnett from Columbia University. Um, he's the head of the Modern Tibetan Studies Department. We also have one of the artists participating in this show, Tenzin Rigdol, a contemporary artist whose artwork ranges from painting, sculpture, drawing, collage, digital to video installation, performance and mixed media. And finally, we have uh, Mr. Tenzin Dorji, the executive director of Students for Free Tibet. About 15 years ago, uh, especially in Lhasa, uh, a group of young Tibetan intellectuals and artists began to emerge using paintbrushes and pens, writing, uh, drawing, uh, to start to find ways of being Tibetan. And the question that they clearly were looking to answer was, can we be both Tibetan and modern? Is there such a thing as a modern Tibetan? And is that modern Tibetan someone who is in continuity with their history, their tradition, and still in touch with the modernity? Some of those artists were basically telling, there is no such thing as Shangri-La. Uh, look at us as who we are. I am an individual being. So there, there's this all this struggle going on, um, and then there's another group of artists who were saying like there's this image of Buddha which is like so powerful, it's like Superman, and uh, rather than disregarding it, how about I take that image and take it as a tree, and rather than taking it out and placing it in a different plant, they said okay, we'll prune it, you know, try to hybridize it modern uh, idea and then see what we can get out of uh, Tibetan traditional way. Tibetan art is very much like existential art where they are asking questions about uh, who I am you know, uh, against all this uh, backdrop of history. So um, currently when I see uh, lots of Tibetan artwork that's where I see they're talking about identity uh, identity uh, against modernity and all those things and a group of artists, those who are aligning themselves with the traditional art world, basically what they're doing is they're doing anti-pop art. You know? Pop art is about making an ordinary object to an, elevating it to an extraordinary level. But then these artists are presenting Buddha and then making it ordinary, playing with them, being very uh, frivolous with them. To be actually at this show and you know see the blooming of Tibetan contemporary art, at a time when there was such a, a strong, high level of repression going on in Tibet. And I think this is a plain fact for everyone to see that uh, since the uprising, since the Tibetan uprising of 2008, the Chinese government has launched this major, ongoing, continuing campaign of uh, cracking down on Tibetan culture, on cracking down of, on any kind of space, any kind of activity um, that is remotely bordering on the political. And uh, one of the wonderful qualities of art and culture is that it's kind of like you know when you're watching the US Open or when you're watching any kind of tennis, I think it takes a really great opponent to bring out the best tennis in the, uh, in the player. And similarly, I think uh, to really bring out the brilliance and uh, wonders of a culture that is strong and resilient, I think when it is faced with repression, that is when the true strength of the culture comes out. Um, and this time that we live in right now is really interesting uh, because if you look at history and if you compare the timeline of other uh, revolutions and other freedom movements, um, you can find quite a few examples where a cultural renaissance 
has preceded a successful political revolution. And you know, usually when you're faced with a government that is really good at propaganda, really good at uh, tracking down on politics, on uh, you know, political freedom, um, sometimes I think if you throw them a curveball, if you throw them you know, an artistic, a cultural kind of resistance, then they get confused. So they know how to deal with politics, but they don't really know how to deal with art. And most times they don't know how to uh, recognize and identify art and culture. And this is what's happening with the Chinese government. It's an empire that has no recognition for culture, that has no respect for culture. And in a way, this turns out to be our advantage in our struggle. I hope that just like Tibetan traditional art and our religious art um, brought us spiritual freedom, they helped us in our pursuit of spiritual freedom. I hope that uh, the contemporary art and the revolution that is taking place right now will help us in our pursuit for political freedom. So thank you very much.